Hi artists, today our famous artist is Alexander Calder. We are going to be making one of his mobiles. So the materials you'll need today, uh, you're going to need scissors, markers, or any coloring material. I'm going to use tape, a pencil to do the um, line drawing of the shapes, and then a paper. If you do have a thick construction or watercolor paper, that will do best uh, for this piece because uh, since we will be hanging it, it will move a lot um, less than if we had really thin paper. If you do have thin printer paper, that's no problem. But what you can do is uh, I recommend um, maybe putting some glue and gluing together two sheets of paper so it's a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna start out just drawing some shapes, some simple shapes so you can grab your pencil. And we are going to draw the shapes, then we're going to color them and cut them. So I'm going to start out with a circle. And then I'm just going to do some different types of abstract shapes. So you can go ahead and do a curved line underneath your circle. Another curved line going towards the bottom right curve line curving towards the bottom right and then you can connect these two. Uh, next shape I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really short diagonal straight line. Curve line curving to the right, curving down to the bottom of the paper and then a sharp diagonal straight line connecting them. The next shape looks like a slice of pizza, so you're going to do a curved line curving over, curving down towards the bottom of the paper, and then connecting them. And don't worry about spacing them out since we are going to cut them out, um, but I am doing the drawing of the shapes based off of one of his mobiles, so these are the kind of irregular abstract shapes he would create. I'm going to do a straight line going across, curving down, another straight line going down to the bottom. It's a little bit shorter and then you're going to curve it over and connect it. All right, so now I'm going to do some smaller shapes. So I'm going to start just to the right of my circle you can do a curve curving down, another curve line at the top, a curved diagonal line, and then connect them. I'm going to do a, almost the same shape as this, but a bigger version. So you can move it over to the right, do a curve line. Curving down to the bottom, and then connecting. Next, it looks kind of like a watermelon slice, so I'm going to do a curved line. Right in between the curved line, I'm going to hop up, put a planning dot, and then I'm going to do two diagonal straight lines. And then we have, let's see, two more shapes. So two more of these blobs. You can just do this one is a bunch of curves all the way around. And one more smaller pizza slice. Curve line, put a point down in the middle, and then you can connect them. So that is all the shapes. And let me move it closer for you guys to see that I'm going to use for my mobile. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is start coloring them. You can choose whatever colors you would like, but if you did want to go off of the original, um, which is the one that is uh, posted with the picture of the lesson plan, then you can follow along with me. So for the circle, I'm just going to use some red. I'm 
I find it easiest to do the outline first. And then from there, you can use the flat side of your marker or colored pencil, crayon, whatever drawing material you want to use today. And fill it in. It's nice to try to stay in the lines um, just to practice your uh, mobility and your you're building your skill as an artist. But um, the nice thing about this, since we are gonna cut them out, you don't have to stay in the lines. So if you wanted to, you could even um, just scribble scrabble to cover the entire thing. And some of you might even wanna make patterns, which is totally fine too. Uh, he loved to use just flat colors and he really loved um, colors that would appear in the circus. Alexander Calder is a really cool artist because he um, kind of brings us back to childhood. So a lot of his artwork is really whimsical and is very playful. And so um, he tends to use a lot of primary colors. So the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, uh, but you can really use whatever colors you like. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab some yellow and I'm going to just start coloring in uh, some of the smaller shapes with yellow. So I'm going to do this one in yellow. The watermelon slice. And the smaller watermelon slice. So I have two in red, three in yellow. Uh, he uses black as well for this one. So the shapes that are black, I'm going to do this shape here. Um, with the black, you might want to just outline it and color it in just because if you scribble it, you are going to um, not be able to see your pencil mark. So just take your time outlining that black shape and then you can fill it in. So it's interesting to look at Calder's work because he starts out with sculptures and like we learned in the presentation, he even dabbled in jewelry making and ceramics, um, but he was really interested with wire. So he did a whole series with wire where he would create little tiny people and um, scenes of a circus and he would kind of see how the wire would create different lines in the shadows. For example, I have the sun here. So when my um, hand is holding this pencil, and maybe I have something else here, I can create a little um, kind of design with the shadow on the floor, even though it is, is not made of that. So he was really interested in the way that shadows and light play together. And, and then he started creating mobiles, which are um, sculptural, but they are suspended. So they move around. The beautiful thing is just a gentle touch or some air kind of blowing it back and forth is going to move it and the mobiles will come alive. Uh, so the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do this pizza shape with black as well. So most of us know sculpture as something that is sitting on a pedestal or a stand and we walk around it. Like a good example is, um, let's see, like a sculpture at Balboa Park. If you've ever been there and it has the mosaic of uh, the like rainbow colored, I think it's a gecko or something, and then you walk around it. Kind of like 
a playground. It's 3D. It is not flat surface like a paper or a painting. Um, so the cool thing about his sculptures is they're not just um, standing and you move around it. They are actually suspended in the air and it moves with you. So let's see, I think the last one is going to be this one. If you were going to go off of the original with me, so you can outline that with black. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, we are going to do, sorry, this is the last one that's going to be black. If you are going off the original, if you're doing your own color scheme, that's totally cool. I love that idea. So uh, back to the artist, um, the amazing thing about him, like he was really interested in nature and so even though these are abstract, they aren't necessarily a tree or, or a constellation or a flower, the petals of a flower, they do come alive like um, things do in nature. So if you guys have ever been hiking and you've been walking through a path and then you've seen um, the leaves of the trees kind of um, moving really gently um, back and forth, uh, kind of almost dancing, that is um, one of his biggest inspirations for his work. So once we um, cut them out, put them together, you'll see the way that they're going to move around. Uh, so when you are done coloring in all of your shapes, you should have 10, then we can start cutting them. I know a lot of you guys are um, pros with scissors, so no need to go over this, but those of you that are younger, if you do need to grab your parent, you might want to ask them for some help. Um, never touch the blade right and I'm left-handed so um, I'm going to use my two fingers in the bigger part and then my thumb in the smaller and then just open and close if you're right-handed it's gonna be the opposite right but um, another trick when I'm using scissors you're going to want to cut out some bigger shapes first and then you can cut the details so I would just go ahead and cut Cut out these columns so we have three columns so there's one two and then the last shape here okay. so you have these big areas here right um, and now it's going to be easier for you to cut a little bit closer. So uh, then I would just start to cut each of the pieces apart. Today I'm working on the ground. Um, since this artist is super into, you know, childlike expression of art, one of the biggest things that I found when I was little is I would always be drawing and even when I would be sitting I would always be working on something on the ground so there so you can just uh, what I do I just keep the scraps over to the side so I don't get confused or else you might accidentally throw away one of your shapes so now you have all your shapes laid out 
and you're just going to start to cut them. So take your time, um, really, you know, using scissors is just another skill, just like if you were to um, build your drawing skills. So just take your time, you know, following along the lines. And since I filmed this, you guys can always, you know, pause it and, and then go back once you're ready. So a lot of sculptures use really um, heavy materials. A lot of times sculptures can be made of different types of rock, marble, um, it could, they could be carved from wood, they can be made of metals, uh, let's see what else. Yeah, sculptures usually are like very heavy materials, but the cool thing about um, Calder's is he uses very delicate materials, um, not heavy at all. So today we're using paper uh, and just a little bit of tape, but he would use a very um, light metal. And then to um, connect each of these shapes, he would use wire. So he would really love working with wire uh, those of you that have been in the dojo with me before, you've probably tried the wire, the different rainbow colored wire that I have. And um, it's really fun to work with that, but I figured a lot of you didn't have that material on hand at home. So we're just kind of being creative, improvising, using some material that you would have handy. The other thing to keep in mind as you're cutting these shapes out, this is just the top, right? So when these are hanging, if this were to hang, you know, from the ceiling, and it moves around, so this side I get the black, but it starts to spin with the air. I'm also going to see the other side. So it is a chance for you if you would like um, I'm gonna keep cutting but another thing you can start to think about is if you want to incorporate other colors or other patterns designs and then maybe on the back it could be a totally different piece so it's kind of fun to start to imagine what you can get with that
Okay, so I've finished cutting all my shapes out and you should have 10, so make sure you count them and you have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. So um, the next step is we are going to start to map them out. Um, so I actually made a little drawing here and we're going to follow off of this. It's kind of like doing a puzzle piece. You don't need this drawing, but um, you could just lay them out on your table with me. So you're going to start out with the red circle. That's going to be at the very top. Uh, the next shape you're going to need is this red big shape here. Then we're going to grab, let's see, the black pizza shape. The smaller pizza. This shape I left white here. And then I'm going to put this small black shape here. There's three different yellow pieces. So there's this one, there's a pizza, and kind of like a watermelon. So we're going to put this one at the top. Watermelon's going to be at the bottom left. Oh, sorry, watermelon's right here, and then the pizza's on the bottom left. And then this last one, oh, oops, I made it kind of big. So it's basically this shape, but you need to make it smaller. My mistake, so we're just going to cut it. Now, the reason why he has to um, make sure that the shapes are different sizes is because he's working with balance. So you want to make sure that these pieces on the left side are going to balance out with the pieces on the right side. So you'll notice there's a lot more on the left. There's smaller ones, but there are um, more of them than the shapes on the right. So the fun part now is going to be figuring out how to balance them. Now, like I said, this is just pencil. Um, he would use wire, which is a different material. But for today, I figured a lot of you didn't have wires, so we're going to use some paper. We're gonna cut the paper and roll it up, and then you guys are going to assemble it using some tape. So, I'm going to start out by, you know, I have this paper here. I would cut some long strips About a quarter inch okay. and what you want to do is you want to try to roll this so um, it might be a little tricky but I'll try my best to explain it so I'm gonna take the top and the bottom edge and I'm just going to start to twist it many times So you can start here at the top, pinch it, and then you're just going to twist it. Try to get it close for you. Twist it around on itself. So what we're doing is we're making a really thick, much stronger piece than just cutting the paper. You might rip it, that's totally fine. You can just keep rolling them. So you're just going to roll it around on itself, twisting. You want it to be pretty strong because you want it to be able to hold up and balance 
um, from one side to the other. Uh, there are other moguls that people have made where they um, use string, but it's important that ours is strong enough so that none of the shapes touch. That was really important for the artist. So I have this little piece and I've rolled it many times. Let's see if I can zoom in, see? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, figure out where to place it. So this looks like it'll fit, yeah, right here, um, between the end of the pizza and I'm gonna make a long one for here. So if you have laid these out in a similar shape, then we're just gonna keep cutting long strips of paper, really small, twisting them, and then you can start to add them to your shapes. So we're gonna lay everything out first, and then we're going to assemble it using some tape. So again, to repeat this step, you can pinch at the top, and you kind of do this, uh, let's see, like a diagonal line and then you're just going to keep wrapping it around itself So this will take you some time. It's, it's kind of tedious, but it is um, a nice way to create a strong piece of paper. So the cool thing is these forms are so balanced that um, once we get it hung up and you know put together, you could look at this from one side of the room and it's gonna look totally different than if you were looking at it from the other side of the room. And that's just because everything's balanced and uh, you get a totally different view. And that's the beauty of sculpture because it is 3D. It's three dimensional and so you can um, you can see many different things and especially with these shapes that are very abstract they're not super realistic they're just simple shapes you you can have different associations so some people may see the planets and some people may see um, some flower petals falling from the wind so yeah it just really depends on who's looking at it. Now, if you do want and see this one's a little bit longer than what I need, that's fine. You can always just um, cut it. You do want to leave a little bit. See how I place it on top? Because I am going to put some tape on the back, so you want to make sure it's long enough to connect it. But I am going to cut off the bottom piece right here.
So you can also cut some shorter strips for the left side because we have these really long areas here to connect, but for the left side of our piece, they're much shorter, so we're just going to need some shorter um, wrapped paper. This is also how a lot of paper straws are made, which is kind of fun to learn. Now, some of you may have even had mobiles when you were a baby, because a lot of the times um, you will have something hanging over your baby crib and it's like relaxing and calming. And so, yeah, that is also known as a mobile. You can even cut your wrapped paper in half if you want to use it for the shorter connections here. So I'm almost done. And for those of you that are super creative and you wanted to go off on your own, you wanted to kind of, you know, use this, make your own shapes and try to figure out how to balance them, then that's also a really fun um, a fun little uh, creative project. Okay, so two more. Just like anything, you know, this might be a little weird at first if you've never done this before, but you can, um, you can always learn and improve. So they're very delicate, very thin materials. And also working this way, a lot of artists are really childlike because they love to look at the world with a sense of wonder and, and you know, kind of analyze certain parts of the world, try to figure it out and create their own version. So it's fun to, um, to do that with your work. Okay, so I have mapped out my um, constellation here. And now I can just start to connect the pieces. So I'm just gonna use some clear tape. If you don't have clear tape, you could use um, any sort of tape or glue. Um, tape is definitely easier because you have to wait for the glue to dry, but you can use whatever you have on hand. So just get a little piece of tape. I'm gonna start at the top. So you're going to want to grab your shape, grab your um, wrapped paper, and then I did not color the back. So when you turn it over, mine's white. You're going to put the flat part against the shape that you started with. And then you can just place your tape right on top. You can either wrap it around or if you want a clean edge, you can, you can cut it. So that's up to you. And then you have this, it's like a little lollipop. Okay, so I'm going to connect each of the ends of the paper to each shape.
And today's a little different. Um, you know, I, I hope you guys really enjoyed the Matisse cutouts. And so I figured it'd be kind of fun to do something a little bit more sculptural again, since I know we've been pretty much only doing drawing or a little bit of painting um, with our virtual classes. So it's kind of fun to try out something that's a little bit more tactile. You can think more like a sculptor. Now this one, it's basically the two small yellow pieces and a black piece in the middle. So what you can do is you can just tape the black piece to the middle here, placing it right in between and then taping it. Should be good. And now the last step is to put them all together. So. Uh, I am going to connect this black piece. Everything kind of connects to this top piece here. So I'm going to connect the black piece. To my red. So if you, if it's rolled up, what you need to do is just unroll it a little bit. See? And then you can put it down. and then you just tape it together. So I think the easiest way to do this is to tape both sides. So you're gonna tape it on the front. And on the back. So it's really together. So we actually have a little extra piece that the artist did not have, but that's okay. Like that. So one on the front. in the back. If you really wanted to, you could cut these pieces of tape off later, but um, that's really up to you.
you can start to see they're gonna start moving like this piece will start starts to move backwards kind of as you hold it up So it really starts to look like the branches of a tree with its leaves. And then for this one, um, I just got a really long piece of tape to attach the black with the smaller pieces to the other one. Kind of wrap it around. And there you have your mobile. So it looks totally different if it's flat versus if it is hanging. So you can even add a little piece of string on here and then as it moves, or if you're in a different location in the room, you're gonna get a totally different look. Um, I think it's really cool if you hang it over your bed, it looks really nice and just watch the way that it'll kind of move around the room. So great job today. I hope you guys enjoyed creating your mobiles, looking at our famous artist, Alexander Calder. And I'm looking forward to see what you came up with um, at our next class.